Angle's continuous coverage of HP Discover live from Las Vegas here in the Venetian Convention Center. And joining me is uh, Jeff Canyon, who's Director of Alliances in the ESSN Group of HP. Welcome to the theCUBE. Uh, thank you very much, Stu. Great, so uh, we're talking about, I believe, virtual systems, which is something that uh, was announced this week uh, here at HP, and uh, people are trying to understand what it is and uh, how it fits in with kind of matrix and cloud systems and all the other converged infrastructure you have, so maybe you could give us a, a little bit of a background on virtual systems. Yeah, sure, um, yeah, we had a uh, press and analyst meeting on uh, on Monday, and then uh, the kickoff of the show Monday night, we uh, uh, announced uh, a number of systems, virtual system being one of them, and uh, so what we're uh, pulling together there is a uh, HP storage, uh, networking, and server uh, together with some of our partners, Microsoft and VMware, uh, into a uh, unified system that we're testing uh, and delivering as a single SKU uh, for customers' virtual uh, environments. So, so, so compute, network, and storage in a single stack that's sold as a SKU. Absolutely, okay. and, and with services as well, Stu. Great, great. So, uh, yeah, as I said, I, you know, I'm familiar. HP has been selling the, the the matrix, and earlier this year, I heard about cloud systems. So, what what's different about virtual systems? So, uh, virtual systems is a is something that's brought together into one unified uh, uh, system that's been te fully tested uh, and uh, delivers a, a an experience that the customer can rely on. Uh, in the case of matrix and cloud system, um, those are not delivered as a single SKU, um, but as separate products that are, are customized for each customer's uh, particular workload needs. Okay, so single SKU, does that ship out of the HP factory as a single uh, you know, rack, or is that something that your, your partners and integrators do? Yeah, so we're putting it all together out of HP's Factory Express. Uh, that'll come with uh, both startup and uh, consulting services. So when it arrives at the customer site, it's not just a, a box that they have to figure out what to do with. A consultant will come on site, do startup services, and implement it into their network, uh, and uh, configuring things like LUNs and so on for for their customer's environment. Well, well so, so I mean, you and I were talking a little bit off camera earlier, and uh, talking, you know, HP has a long history of pre-configuring, getting it all together, making sure there's the management, uh, as you said, you know, LUNs and my, you know, IP addresses, and everything's ready when it go, go, goes out of the box. Um, so, you know, I guess, what, what, was, what was the drive to create virtual systems and uh, go beyond just, you know, a, kind of a packaging exercise to, uh, you know, integrating it together? So I think uh, one of the tenets is trying to simplify um, things across the entire spectrum from, from the ordering, from the delivery, uh, and to the integration at the customer site. So while we certainly have integrated and will continue to do that, uh, virtual systems will be shipped as single SKUs. We'll also have reference architectures for customers that want an even greater amount of uh, flexibility. Okay, so, so uh, you know, HP has a converged infrastructure group, and while it has, you know, we were just listening to David K. Hill talking about, you know, HP has very impressive market share in servers, uh, now number two in networking, uh, and, uh, you know, very strong, strong in storage historically. Um, but when it comes to fully baking these solutions together in a stack, uh, it feels a little bit like HP is following in some of the footsteps of uh, some of the other competitors out there. Do you think that's fair? So I think uh, uh, timing is actually pretty good for us to come in uh, to the game here. Uh, we certainly are, uh, HP's watching the marketplace with VCE uh, and FlexPod. Um, uh, if you look at some of the recent announcements uh, at, uh, that VCE had, uh, had out recently, you can see that they're uh, evolving uh, their solution offerings, I think actually the timing's pretty good. I think that uh, some of the market has been seeded, um, but HP has uh, strong offerings across the uh, spectrum, uh, as you said, for compute, network, uh, and storage, and uh, timing's good for us. So, so, so the real battleground I see on convergence seems to be the systems integrators and the service providers. What's HP's message there? So for uh, service providers, so, so one of the things we're delivering, uh, as we, we, whoops, excuse me, uh, as we talked off camera, one of the things um, is that customers aren't going to deploy just a virtual infrastructure. It doesn't really do anything for their business. And uh, so one of the things that we'll be uh, working with partners on is workloads on top of that. And I think you're right in terms of uh, system integrators are going to work with customers and can enhance these virtual systems uh, to deliver the workloads that customers are uh, expecting to put on top of it. And, and, uh, I, th I think that's great. I've talked to a number of service systems integrators and they say anything to simplify their job I is good. Uh, th there is a little bit of value in putting all the pieces together, but if that can be done, 
one, you know, from a single SKU standpoint, they have added services that they can put on top of it. Um, and as you said, applications, the usage once I've got virtualization. And, and I should point out, I believe uh, you said VMware and Microsoft Hyper-V today uh, from a hypervisor standpoint. Right, those are the two uh, initial partners that we're working on, and, and, and we'll expand that over time. And, and what workloads do you have targeted for the initial deployments? So the initial one that we're coming out with is a VDI workload. Um, as you uh, may know for app systems that were also announced this week, we have some uh, fairly specific hardened appliances, if you will, that are dedicated towards workloads. And we will evolve uh, those type of appliances to take advantage of the investment we're making in virtual systems as well. So you'll see over time different workloads uh, that will work here uh, on top of virtual systems. Okay, well. so, so, so maybe a VDI is the first workload. Uh, you know, Wikibon spent a long time looking at desktop virtualization. Uh, it's something that always seems to be the next uh, technology for, from a virtualization standpoint, but it's still kind of niche and the ecosystem's very dispersed. Um, Question I have for you is, do we think desktop virtualization is really ready to take off? And you know, why, why does virtual systems, how does that fit into that? So uh, for virtual systems, one of the things I think about, a, uh, about the VDI workload is it is uh, a bit more predictable. So we're able to, to size the systems uh, more effectively. Uh, we have a lot of experience in this, in this area and can deliver uh, the experience a customer is going to expect. Um, whether that will take off in the market, uh, I think we'll see some of our, we're looking at delivering those through reference architectures to still uh, allow the customer to have that additional uh, flexibility that they wouldn't get in a hardened appliance. Okay, I, I've also been getting uh, you know information talking about the service providers uh, doing desktop as a service. So, you know, applications uh, from the service providers and, and desktop uh, is one that can be there. Is that that's something that, that you guys are looking at? Um, so not me particularly, I'm yeah. uh, sitting in on the R&D side and trying sure. to produce these products, um, but I think that's uh, probably an excellent point and something that we'll, uh, we'll need to incorporate. So one of the things, we had an announcement this week about this, uh, this product segment, and so we're in the labs, my team's in the labs right now developing these, and uh, we have uh, uh, some deeper conversations uh, with both customers and, and analysts later tonight where we're looking at gathering feedback. So it's a, I think it's Great. good to get that. Yeah, yeah so, 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 so Jeff, yeah, you, you've got a lab there and you've got a bunch of hardware and you put, put all the pieces together. Um, maybe you can give us a little color as to how, how all of the acquisitions that HP has done. So my understanding is you have three different models of virtual system today. Uh, and on the storage standpoint, two of those are from the left-hand technology and one from 3PAR, uh, 3PAR a, a relatively recent acquisition. So you know, how fast is HP moving those into the product line and how are those products to work with on, on the inside? Yeah, that's right, Stu. So there are three different virtual systems I just want to point out as well. Right, so it's not there's, you know, uh, one, two, and three. Right. Inside one, two, and three, there's a lot of variability in terms of the, the, store, the amount of storage, the amount of servers, the memory, and so on. So we're trying to bake in a lot of, uh, of uh, variability and flexibility for the customer. Um, speaking to some of the technology uh, uh, acquisitions, one of the things we're also including, you didn't mention the 3Com uh, uh, networking portion. Sure. So top of rack switching, really important inside the appliance, uh, as well as providing ease of connectivity to the uh, core data, data center. So, uh, Good history there, 3 has been with, with HP uh, over a year now, obviously 3PAR newer. But I have to say, even in the last six months from my own experience, uh, you know, the engineers are now uh, working on a daily basis with 3PAR. We're trying to position that product. It's obviously very important for both virtualized environments and a nice pathway to the cloud. You'll, if you look at cloud system, our premier uh, storage for that as well is 3PAR and some of the uh, thin provisioning and autonomic capabilities are pretty well wired for virtualization and cloud. All right, good, great. Uh, one, one thing I want to poke at a little bit is if you, you talk about kind of variability and flexibility versus homogeneity. So one of the challenges that when you look at a traditional data center, which is, you know, very fragmented and lots of different workloads and lots of different technologies as opposed to if you look at, you know, the Googles of the world and the cloud, it's very homogeneous. So how do we balance making sure that we understand my environment can, ca you know, get my workloads working on it uh, versus the traditional environment. So you know, how do you solve that balance? So, um, hmm, I haven't anticipated that question, Stu. <laughs> um, I think that, um, 
I'm sure I. <laughs> okay, so, so, so uh, do you follow what I'm saying? As I guess you know, when when I I, I need to marry my, my storage, you know, my memory and how much bandwidth I have, and if it's very variable, it's I put it together and I need to make sure it all works. So how do you make sure it's, it's baked it's so, so that it's a configuration that when I put it in my environment, I can just run with it, versus you know, th there's all the permutations and combinations and thousands of pages yep. of interoperability matrices like you know some companies have. So how how do I go from you know, the mess of the data center today to uh, an operational model that looks more like pools of storage, uh, more yep. like what, a, what, what a, you know, a private cloud, if you will, yeah. or so, infrastructure as a service? So, so one of the things I can tell you in, uh, as we're uh, uh, developing this product, we're going to push a lot of different workloads on it to try and understand for the customer uh, what kind of workloads are pushing more on, on the network stack, which ones are pushing on the storage stack, and with HP's Virtual Connect technology, which is uh, going across uh, the family here, we'll be able to tune that and work with the customer to tune it. Yep. So I think that the, the variability workload is something that uh, virtualized environments are really growing up on now. Yep. Right? I think we're, you know, we look at very high numbers of, uh, of virtual servers on these systems, uh, but as the workloads increase, right. uh, we're going to have to uh, Look at ways to better deploy that infrastructure. Sure. Yeah, so, so the way I look at it is when we went from you know physical servers to virtual servers, we we had some consolidation and got more utilization yep. out of them. We need to make sure that as we put the stacks together, we do that because otherwise you'll have an imbalance where you'll have way too much memory or you know not enough storage or you know over provisioning bandwidth. And as you said, the the the, the virtual connect product line. Um, from a networking standpoint, give you a lot of flexibility. On the network side, we want to make sure that we have kind of the memory and the storage kind of lined up in the same way. Right. Uh, three par is very flexible. Uh, you know, left hand are very flexible. So uh, I think you know the good architectural building blocks, and uh, just think we need some more maturity overall in the industry to make sure we can just push higher and higher utilization and, and, and get more out of uh, our infrastructure. You know, one of the things I'll just, you mentioned uh, as, as part of this thread, uh, uh, connection to cloud, and uh, virtual system will have HP's uh, 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 inside control software. And that's kind of the basis of both the matrix uh, product offering, now cloud system matrix, yep. and cloud system enterprise. And so we already today have services to add uh, those, the, the matrix operating environment components to, the, to virtual system, and then add the CSA software stack. Okay. So you really can, can start out with a, a kind of a basic virtual system, if you will, and grow that up as your needs, uh, as your right. needs. Well, well, well Jeff, so. you know, congratulations on the launch of virtual system. We appreciate you sharing this with theCUBE here, and look forward to reading more as the product matures, hits the marketplace, and everything there. So thank you so much for joining us.